Welcome back to On The Mark. Kangaroos defender Jasper Pittett is our next guest. Uh, great to have you back in Melbourne. What's it like being back home? Yeah, it's been unreal. I think um, nine years in Adelaide, it was a great time for me, but I, it's a long time and I think you don't really realise how much you miss the, the uh, people close to you until you're back there and certainly been... Um, really good to be back close to family and friends and I think it's really helped my footy. How did it feel in that moment where you realised that you were potentially going to be on the trade table? Yeah, look, it was... I was taken aback initially just just with my circumstances having the two years left on the contract. I probably didn't really think that was on the, on the table. Um, and then it was discussed um, just after the end of the season between myself and, and um, Ken and a few of the um, other officials there at Port. And, yeah, taken aback initially, but I think probably had a month before trade period then to really absorb the information and, and, and assess what would be best for myself and obviously the club assessing what's best for them. Um, but wasn't really sure if it was actually going to be possible. So it was a bit of a stressful time. Um, and then it all happened really quick. I was going on a holiday um, and then the day before I went on that holiday, I, I flew in here quickly to, to have a meeting with North. and. Um, I found out I think the following Monday when I was in the States. So I had a SIM card over there making sure I was contactable. But we were also doing a bit of driving so I wasn't sure if I was going to be within phone reception. So it was all a little bit stressful and for probably more for my girlfriend who didn't want it to kind of ruin the vibe of the holiday as well. <laughs> so, um, but luckily we found out early enough and we could get on with our, our holiday and have a really good time. Talk me through where your headspace was out at the time because you were starting to feel the pressures of, of that footy bubble. Yeah. Um, look, I, I'm someone who sort of... I'd like to think I play with my heart my sleeve and put everything into whatever I do and I certainly felt like I did that at Port. So in, in some ways it was, it was a little bit hurtful feeling like um, where the club thought their direction was probably wasn't necessarily going to involve me anymore. So, you know, initially I was a little bit hurt by that, um, but I understand it's a business and, and, and they've got to think about the success for them in the future. And What was it about your character that, that they didn't feel like was fitting into what they were creating? Not necessarily sure it was my character. I think my inconsistency in form over the 2017 and 18 seasons was probably a huge reason, but... Um, Potentially, um, I'd just lost a bit of the passion for footy and potentially having, having someone like that around wasn't going to be super beneficial for, you know, the younger guys coming through. I'm not totally sure, but um, I know I was pretty valued there from the playing, um, playing group um, and, and from any of the coaches. But like I said, when, when you have a season like Port did last year and I was involved in that, which was pretty disappointing, you have to make changes. And unfortunately for me, that was... That was one of the changes they looked at. Did you think about walking away from the game altogether? Did that cross your mind when you were sort of at your, your toughest moments? Maybe not walking away, but I had the two years left in the contract and I'd certainly spoken to people close to me and, you know, even people at Port that I'd be pretty happy to transition outside of footy once that contract was done, which would mean I'd be 29. I mean, a lot of people get to that age in the AFL industry and, you know, trying to string out as many years as they can. I was probably thinking more along the side of, yeah, that could be me and I'm happy to um, explore opportunities outside and just, yeah, get away from it. But, um, you know, I found that in hindsight now, the, the decision to move to Melbourne, um, I've really found that passion for footy again and I'll probably be, be one of those guys trying to string out a few more years <laughs> now. So. What was your relationship with Ken like during this period? My relationship with Ken was always really good, um, which is probably contrary to what... Um, people may or may not think. Um, we certainly were very different people and <laughs> probably didn't agree on on heaps of stuff or a lot of stuff, but um, he always had the ability to be super um, honest with me and, and, and I think, in, in although we had our differences, I think he did like that about me and thought for the majority of my time with him, that was really beneficial for the club and, and, and the group. Um, at times I might have probably tried to oppose him and the, and the coaches and maybe the leaders um, a bit too much, I'm not sure, but um, he was always very honest and we always had a pretty respectful relation for each other and, and it was no different in, our, in my exit meeting, although it was a bit, I was a bit taken aback by the news, he, that, he gave it to me straight and, and I did respect that about that. What about the fans? You've had a mixed relationship with the fans over the years. How do you feel about them and how do you think they feel about you? 
Yeah, look, I, I know there's certainly some fans from the old club that stuck by me and I still get lots of really nice messages from people um, even after the, um, the game a few weeks ago. Obviously, I knew I was getting booed and jeered a little bit. <laughs> I could hear that, but um, uh, I had lots of messages of support saying, you know, they wish they didn't do that or, you know, we, we were getting behind you. But, um, yeah, look, I can understand frustrations around my game. I do play on the edge, I do make mistakes, um, but I think I've always tried to play with with 100% effort and, and I do play with a lot of passion. Um, I take it, you know, take it to heart when we lose and, 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 and I do take my performance pretty seriously. So sometimes it can be a little bit um, disheartening when, when you do hear the, you know, the boos or that, but I understand that. Um, Does it wear you down? Probably. Probably a little bit towards the end of last year, I, I did feel it more than I had. I've, I've usually been pretty good at brushing that stuff off, but I think um, last year when you know when there's games where you know you've just put in so much effort and people are bagging you or whatever, and it's just a bit like oh, well. and sometimes as a defender you don't, they don't get the opportunity to see some of the work you know we do as defenders behind the ball that is obviously really valuable to the team, but not so much visible to the public. So. You do try and just hold on to what, what your teammates and coaches say, but it is hard to not take notice of you know, what the outside world do say. How do you go about dealing with that? Because obviously we've just caught up with Aaron Norton, who's so laid back, and yet you admit that you absorb a lot of that and, and take it a lot of it to heart. How do you deal with it when you're away from the club? Yeah, uh, I probably at times in my life have taken just, not even necessarily my own struggles, but just the broader public struggles to heart a bit, just injustices and unfairnesses in life. Um, and yeah, I, I know people close to me think I do go on rants probably a bit too often <laughs> about stuff and stuff that you can't really control, but that's sort of just the way I am. But um, how do I deal with it? I, I've always been pretty good at communicating um, with the people around me, um, particularly if, if I'm frustrated or down or whatever, I've always felt like I've been someone who's happy to talk to those people and not hold it in. So that's certainly been a way I've been able to deal with stuff. But just listening to the people who are important to you anyway, who do know you best and know your character is always a good way to deal with that stuff. What kind of things are you passionate about? Um, well, outside of footy at the moment, um, I'm, I'm studying design. I'm still in Adelaide at the moment, but looking to transfer us to um, uh, either a uni, a uni over here in Melbourne. So that's something I've been really passionate about for probably the last three years and um, you know it's something I see myself doing after football. Awesome well we have loved listening to your story today thank you so much for coming in and best of luck at the kangaroos and enjoying uh, life back home in Melbourne. Thank you.